two AI IDEs, one keyboard, raw code promises a squad of autonomous agents, and cursor AI counters with YOLO mode and a sleek UI. Which one actually ships code faster and cheaper? Let's find out. In the latest year, in 2025 especially, we've been seeing a lot of models coming out that uh, they all uh, emphasize the agentic reasoning and uh, the possibility to perform agentic coding. This brought to give the possibility to build application with the, the famous vibe coding, so just uh, writing uh, prompts, but also the possibility even to perform uh, and write code in YOLO mode, so that you can basically write in a agentic way, giving a lot of autonomy to your PC. Another type of pattern that has been developing is the boomerang mode, which is the mode that actually used by some of the editor AI tools, such as raw code. Raw code is actually an agentic coding tool, which is inside the Visual Studio code and 100,000 download in very short amount of time and is included in Visual Studio code. Cursor actually it achieved 100 million ARR in 18 months, so it, uh, it had an enormous success, success. That's why I want to compare two tools that most of teams consider using to also compare them and understand what people find best, because not necessarily the tool that is most famous is the best tool, but let's, let's find out. So what are the characteristics? First, let's start with the raw code is a Visual Studio extension. It allows you to use then the AI LLM of your choice and to insert the API of, of it so that you can use it. Cursor AI instead is you to use it, you can either use it for free with some limitation and amount of request with the pro LLM tools that you can use, or you can pay a membership the, the $20 per month or the $40 per month and uh, have access to the best LLM available to perform your web coding. Coding is actually used and mostly uh, advised to people that are more, a bit more technical. Doesn't mean that non-technical person can use it. They can definitely use it. You can totally do web coding with it. Same thing is road code, even though it's a bit more friendly for the web coding, in my opinion. But raw code is easier to install because it's just an extension of Visual Studio Code. You can just install, install it in really few seconds, your setup. Once you have your API key and you set it up, basically it's pretty much fast and easy to use. Cursor AI is the same. You have to log to register to Cursor website. You need to sub pay a membership and then download the the coding IDE, and then you can use it. The raw code um, is uh, famous for its boomerang multi-agent orchestration, while Cursor is famous for the YOLO agent auto-apply, which basically is autonomous. The boomerang multi-agent allow, when you, when you write an instruction, to deliver that instruction to sub-agent agents that allow to give apparently a good performance on immediately and fast resolving some, some issues. So what about automations? For what concern raw code? It reads and writes files. It runs shell and open browser automatically. For what concern cursor is limited, it has a limited shell functionalities and it browse only through MCP, the MCP functionality that is a, a, a built-in, you have, and, but you have to configure it. Same thing for raw code, but it's easier and it's a, much faster to, to set it up. What about the pricing? For raw code, you pay for a DLLM call and it can vary based on the task you give. For cursor, you pay pretty much, it, it's cost efficient because you pay $20 and 
and you don't pay more than that. So what people think about raw code and cursor, for what concern raw code, some people on Reddit said that it, it's boomerang mode took them from 10 hours in cursor to one hour in raw code. So that actually was a very uh, positive in terms of speed and performance for raw code. By the way, some people uh, complained the fact that this tool uh, is uh, very expensive. It costs a lot. Someone even spent $100 in three days just for learning raw. I didn't uh, have this experience, to be honest, but I, I feel it's a bit uh, more expensive probably than it would be a cursor. Another problem, though, that the people found on cursor in Reddit that they, they expressed as complain is that it failed some tasks. For example, in the example of the C, uh, CSV mapping in Excel, uh, the prompt failed. So it, it, they were complaining that it was not smart enough to, to infer structure. Even though the fact that the, the, the flat fee of, of $20, it actually makes a cursor preferred by some people because the fact that you pay per token instead could make people pay much more in terms of price. Some other neutral people, they actually said that they use both for different reasons and they keep both editors handy. Julia Goldie says that for everything complex, Boomerang is a game changer. In the, some other people say that big brain models delegate to fast hands. It, it is basically in the official forum of Rocode. Some people using Rocode is actually advising to use the O4 Mini model and the Gemini 2.5 to have better result. Okay. So, said this generic information about raw code and cursor for, from people and from different channels. Now, let's see uh, raw code. As you can see here, we have uh, you can install raw code simply by going to the extension in the VS Code and then digiting raw code. I already have installed it, but as you can see, the first option will be the one. You install it and then you will have the kangaroo icon displaying here. You can see how lean is the structure of this extension because you have here the, the button in which you can add the new tasks to, to, to chat with. You can improve your prompts clicking here. You can define the, the roles, the rules like you do in cursor. Then you have the MPC server uh, set up where you can uh, insert the MCP of your choice. You can, you can check your history to, if you want to go back from to a previous work you've done in the past and search in the fuzzy mode whatever you, you've been searching in the past. You can open in, in editor specifically to a new window or just leave it on the left if you don't like it on the right. And you have the settings. In the settings, you can set up your API key. For myself, I'm using OpenAI with the GPT-4.1. I use mostly the mini because part that it is, uh, but it also has a higher number of context token, which is 1 million. And uh, I have I had some difficulty with the 4.1 instead because it has a lower context token and it felt like it couldn't uh, complete a task fully by itself. So that's why I decided to use the 4.1 in, in my project. Said this, uh, you, can, you see if you go, if you, if you scroll down, that you can also click to auto approve to give more autonomy autonomous power to this tool. Uh, for example, I, I gave the authority to read, write to browser to retry, to use MCP automatically once I install them and to uh, use automatically switch between different modes without requiring approval automatically. Then allow creation and comp completion of subtasks without requiring approval and the execution, the automatic execution, allow terminal commands without requiring approval. Go cautious with those commands because they can be dangerous. I gave total 
approval, but uh, it's not something advised to, to everyone. But myself, so far, I didn't have any problem. As you can see here, um, you can write your prompt and uh, you can use the modality of code, architect, if you need to create uh, and plan a new stack for a new project. The ask mode, if you want just to chat, and the bug mode, if you need to debug any error that there is in your, your application, and the edit mode. You can also um, write, start to write a prompt and ask uh, to improve the prompt to be better by uh, the eye. So this is something I actually use a lot uh, to improve uh, when, you, when you have to write prompts that are not clearly written in English or clearly expressed. I use this to attempt to better write the prompt before giving it uh, to the LLM. And I give it any image that could improve even further the context. And then I start. Uh, I want just to briefly show you what I built uh, with the raw code. Okay, as you can see, I built this website fully with raw code and chat GPT 4.1 mini. I actually was impressed because um, I could build all this website and uh, I didn't uh, publish it yet online. But as you can see, I built it step by step. I built, I built first the call to action, then I built the nav bar, then I built the every section, then I built the footer, and then all the other pages, the contact form, the about us, the images I didn't add purposely, but it's not because there is an, any error. This that moves to the correct um, section of the page, the link to another website. One thing interesting anyway, that this website was built with the next JS uh, for the front end, node JS for the back end. Then I used uh, for basically I created this form so that people can send me an email. And once, uh, once I submit the form, I receive an email with the information provided by this form. And I used web three forms for that because it has a generous free access, generous free plan. I think it, you can receive until 250 emails per month or per day, I'm not sure, but definitely what I will never receive to, in the testing phase, so many emails. So this, this worked for me and it works totally fine. So you, you can send, it's totally sanified. So to avoid any issue with cybersecurity, same with the content, the contact us form. So it's a full fledged website working and with correct scrolling, fully functional, just built with raw code. Um, I tried before, before building raw code, I did the same with cursor. I honestly had the worst experience with the cursor because I got into error. I'm not sure why you let me know in the comment, but if you, if you know, but while I was building, building the project, it felt like it was creating duplicated folders, for example, for the components folder, it created twice components inside the components with same folders, same files. And then it started the not understanding as well as raw code, the uh, three, the scaffolding of the application and what to recognize as the root of the application. That's why I restarted from scratch with raw code and then I had a much better experience. Probably there is some issue there. I was in the, the same folder, in the same root in Curve as I, I was in raw code. But for some reason, after starting writing more and more code, the more complex became application, the more cursor started failing at that. That's why I really sympathize and want to share with you this new tool, which together with Klein, I found the best. Look at also Try AI, which is a cursor competitor by Biden. The only cons of this Try AI is that often many people are using it because it's free. And calls to AI is, is quite slow to g give you responses to AI because many people are using it and you you are always in queue to get a response. That's it. I want to show you this. This is a full application, fully working. So I have to do just very little touch here and there and probably remove this section for the moment. 
because this is just a mocked one. And uh, that's it. And then I will publish it online. I uh, hope uh, this video was useful for you. Uh, let me know in the comment if you have any feedback on anything I said. And like, subscribe the channel if you find this content useful. And uh, see you in the next.